Good evening. Welcome to our regular select board meeting. It's Tuesday, February 22nd, 2022. 2-22-22. <laughs> it's been said a lot today over the, everything. Um, and, uh, we have four select people here. Is uh, Mark is not with us tonight. We have the town manager, the town clerk, the town finance director, the town planner, and the chair of the planning board with us tonight. Please stand with me and salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. Is uh, first items we have is the minutes from February eighth and February fifteenth. We'll go with the meetings from February eighth first. I don't see any issues. I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes. A motion. Do we have a second? A second. A motion and a second. I'll go through the roll. Noah. Yes. Linda? Actually, Tom, uh, uh, misspoke. I was. Uh, oh, that's right. You weren't here. Because I was. Here. <laughs> I was thinking well, last week. I was yeah, no. Nope. I, I wasn't even paying attention to that. All right, we'll need to rescind that motion. Yeah. All right, I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes from Tuesday, February 8th. All right, we have a motion. I will second. All right. Is, uh, now I will go through the roll. Um, Noah? Yes. Mike? Yes. Myself is a yes, and Linda will abstain, I'm sure. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. And then we have a meeting from our special meeting, minutes from our special meeting last week. And I'll make a motion for approval. <laughs> yeah. I'll second. Yeah, you were that one. I was going to say, I'll give you that one, Linda. <laughs> <laughs> we have a motion and a second. I'll go through the roll. Noah? Yes. Linda? Yes. Mike? Yes. And myself is a yes. Thank you. Sign these now so I don't forget when Patty doesn't yell at me later. I always forget something. All right. Um, public comment. We have. Oh, you can do public comment now? Okay. Yep. Yeah, well, I personally have two things. That, uh, well, one. The name name and residence? Uh, Michael LaRue, 263 Pine Hill Road. I'm also the, vice, the chair for the planning board. Um, the first thing is we should, as the planning board and selectmen and town planner and town manager, should have a workshop meeting soon or within a certain time just to talk about marijuana in the town and try and get everyone together and figure out where we should go from here. Um, second note is this is totally different but masks when are we going to change the mask to go to not optional or, yeah to optional it, it, it is um, it, the way it's set up now is we've been following going with the, the new york county cdc guidance yep and when it's in the high you know we have the mask mandate it's been like this for the whole two years it's, it, it, right we've always had to wear masks yep. It, um, a lot of people have been sick now. It, it's, um, so I we haven't made any plans on yes. you know addressing that, but I'm sure it's coming up. But I thought I had heard that the CDC was actually going to do something today. Right. I didn't yeah. see anything. So yeah, the, nothing at, official today. At one point, that one was like like a year ago or like the summer. It was Rachel like gone. Yeah. At that point, we were in mild or moderate, and then yeah. masks were recommended but not you know yeah. mandatory so at that point that's built into the town policy once we're down to a per area basis a per person uh rate okay. then it automatically is built in where the mask become a different requirement or to have to or because i thought like the selectmen would be able to control some part of that 
whether well, we, 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 we do, but you no, know, we, we do it through a policy, so we have to you know, you know have the policy okay. and, and review it and yep. talk about it. So, yep. so I just wanted to bring up a discussion about well, that. That's and, and that it's, I've it's, been waiting for it to come up. I, I had a I had to host a meeting for hours, and it's tough oh, talking it's, on this. It's, yes, I know. <laughs> try, try working in them for eight hours. Right. Yeah, I just can't do that. <laughs> so thank well, you. I just wanted to yeah. put that in. Not a problem. Not a problem. And, and, and as I said, as I fully expected the CDC to be releasing new no no guidance today, and it didn't come through. So yeah, I and, think it'll be soon. Yeah. 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 I for one can't wait till we can dispense with them, but as, uh, I also like to be safe. So all right. Any other public comment? We have no public hearing, no reports to committees, no department reports. And now we have proposed changes to the land use ordinance with Tammy Delman and Plana Michael LaRue. Plana and Michael LaRue, yeah. chair of this. All right. All right. So as we have, it seems like a lot of changes, but a lot of it is just you know minor changes to a lot of things. It seems yes. like. So the one, the one big new one is the changing the disorderly building ordinance. That's the first one. Is uh, and for people that aren't familiar with that, is uh, we implemented a disorderly building ordinance probably about nine or ten years ago, I believe, and it w came as a result of problems with repeat problems that different buildings and we haven't really had any enforcement behind it and so that's one of the reasons we're talking about changing it isn't it Mike? Is that, yes. yeah, right. So is what this seems to do is to give the police of the town a much stronger you know response that we can do. Yes and there's more action for them to for you guys to for them to handle it. You know? um, it changes the numbers to three incidents within a 30-day period. So, I, I have a question on that particular one, where it says engaging in fighting without being a license or a privilege to do so. Yeah, I, I, I saw that. And, and, and we, do have, we do have a boxing place in town, and so we like, have to allow fighting, I guess. Uh, Tammy, if you could explain a little bit. What that involves is to do anything like that, you have to have a permit in the town of Berwick to host anything like that. So if someone wanted to have a party or a small gathering and a fight broke out, it would not be permitted. Hence, if the police were called, that would be one of the They broke it up, everybody went on their way, and they started their festivities again, and another fight broke out. Okay. That would be true. Okay, so this particular thing here, is this sort of a protection yeah, for that boxing company? Right <clears throat> yeah, it's engaging in fighting without being licensed or privileged to do so. There are places that have the permits to be able to do it. So the company, are, and I'm talking about the one out here on Sample, right. so that they have a license to... I believe so, yes. Right. Okay. Yeah, if they want to do, if they want to do a tournament or something like that, you know, then they would have to come through the town and, and be permanent and they couldn't just know throw one up there so yeah, okay. so this yeah but it, it did sound funny the word <laughs> yeah i just want to make sure that we're not uh imposing something new on an established business mm -hmm. if they're permanent and everything yeah. yeah this was drawn up and changed through the code enforcement officer jennifer mckay and captain mott from borough pd so this was a mutual type agreement that they said well if we change this how is this going to affect this and because she had the code side and knew the rules for the land use ordinance and everything, then he knew the PD side of it. So when they got together, they had, yep, we can do this, we can do this, we can do this, we've got an ordinance for this, so we don't need this. Okay. Especially for like noise, um, a lot of things there are already ordinances for. And we went through that with the public command. With the mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm not for, you know, a sporadic fight that breaks out. I just don't want to be including a new policy on a, on a legitimate business. Correct. Right. Correct. No, this isn't. And the one big piece on this 
is there is a substantial increase in the fine amount, and the board, the planning board, knows that it's up to the board of selectmen to take and set the fine amount. So the dollar amounts that you see in this new ordinance, or updated ordinance, I should say, mm -hmm. are recommended by both the planning board, code enforcement officer, and those two. But so that doesn't mean we can't increase them. That correct. Correct. That correct. <laughs> I don't want to decrease that minimum. Yeah. Well, and, and that, that, that's one of the things you know that we've been doing with with our other permitting and stuff is, is that you know we're trying to cover the cost of the town to enforce these things. You know, it shouldn't be my money's enforcement. Right. It should be the people that break the law. Correct. So. And it it also helps that. By keeping them very low, a lot of people nowadays can, okay, here you go. Sometimes in order for people to pay attention to what they're doing, you got to hit them in the wall. Right. Yeah. Without coming right out and saying it, yes. Well, it, it, you know, I'll, I'll come right out and say it. it is a, lot of the, a lot of these problems we have with these buildings are coming from just a few owners. And they're repeat offenders and, you know, it, it's been, they've just used it as a cost of business. You know, it's a tax write off for them. And you know, a $50 fine is nothing. And so, and like I said, it is, we'll, we'll, I'll, I have a feeling we'll keep the, the amounts in there for now, but you know, we'll talk to the, the town and the police and find out if it's covering it. If not, I'll bring it up. Is right. there anything for, you say we have a lot of repeat offenders. So this goes first, second, and third, um, without a without a time period in it. Within so thirty days. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sorry, then I missed that. Nope, that's okay. Okay. So a lot of information there for you. So if they in that thirty day period they have two offenses, and so then now they're paying they would have potentially paid fifteen hundred dollars, five hundred and a thousand. Forty five days later they get into another one. They're not at the third offense. They're back at first. Correct. That was my understanding of it. Yeah. It all has to take place to get to that third offense within 30 days. And then at the end of the third offense within 30 days, it gives the town more um, ability to take and react to it. Just to clarify that, is it 30 days from the first offense or the first emergency call, or is it 30 days from the most recent call? I believe it says within 30 days. So the well, then any, at least 30, any 30 day period. Yeah. That's how she's so trying to read through it, the too. 10th of one month to the 9th of the next month. Well, where days. do you start that 10th? At the first of the month? first of month. Okay. It should almost be like a 90 day period. No. Yeah, well, that's it. I mean. Yep. Yeah. Makes sense, so 45 days? Yeah, because it just seems like if, if you get hit with a $500 fine because of one offense, and you happen to wait 40 days, now it's still another $500 fine as opposed to, you know. And I get your point, if it's one fight going over to another fight, I get that, but uh, if they're repeat offenders, well, yeah, they may, they may, may play the system. Well, is to get to that third offense is in, in a third offense in 30 days, there's nothing to say that we can't just say that you know every additional offense is you know that amount yeah that's right yeah. you yeah. know and that, any additional offense within that year is starts at the 2500. I, so know, if it's yeah. if you're looking at this is your fifth sixth or seventh you're not going back to 500. right well that's you know, yeah because, I you, because you played the system and you're outside the 30-day window if it's within a year's time, the, the fiscal year, then I think that you stay at the 2500 Per offense. Per offense. you built up to that. I, I think the way it's written right now is is good for, you know, just as a as a test barometer. You know, we can we can we can see how it works in practice and see if there is you know, anybody, if there's any kind of, you know, gaming the system, if there's any, you know, people that are just on the cusp or, or if it's just, you know, because, I mean, I feel like it's, it's the, the amounts are pretty appropriate as they, as they stand. And, and 
again, if they're if they're having seven calls in a you know seven offenses in a year, I mean we're going to be able to get that information from the from the chief, and we can adjust it next year again if it if it's still an issue. Well, chief Chief Plant has said before that is some of these builders they respond ten times or more a month. Yeah. To them. Yeah, I think so, they already told us that before. Was yeah. that they, they're good. The numbers are pretty high. Yeah, you know, yeah. and so if it's ten times a month, that's twenty-five thousand dollars for the town. Yeah. So, well, and that's because it doesn't really address any offense after the third offense, does it? No. No. No, I do think a subsequent offense should be thrown in there. Yeah, you know, for every yeah. uh, every offense after the third offense is twenty five hundred dollars. Yeah, I, right. I, I think leaving it in a thirty day window at that point, you know, right. So, is, uh, but you know, as you said, we can always come back and, and revisit this. Yep. You know, is uh, we'll be voting on this in June, mm -hmm. and uh, we have until November to right. see if it's working. October until November, right? Because the vote would be in November, right? Yeah. Yeah, the vote would be November. I just got an email from Jen. She said it's on a calendar year, not fiscal year, and it's 40 time, 45 times in one 45-day period recently. 45 times in one 45-day yeah. period. Yeah. So one person? One building. Building, they responded 45 times in, in a 45 day period. Wow. Wow. So, it, you know, start thinking about how much that costs the town every time yeah. they respond. You know, it, it, I bet $2,500 doesn't cover that response. You know, I think you, once they get up to the $2,500, I think they're going to pay a little bit more mm -hmm. attention than they were before. Yeah. Yep. Oh. Yeah. 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 Realistically, if, if you had, you know, 20 in a month. I mean, that's your entire, you know, income for that entire building. They're certainly going to want to address that as a problem and get it fixed as soon as possible. Yeah. So, so yeah, I, I, I think we need to add in, though, you know, the subsequent, uh, subsequent offenses, you know, is the $2,500. Right. You know, you know I, I, somebody else will figure out the wording on that, not me. <laughs> so, um, and we had our public hearing. I don't think anyone spoke on this. Yeah, it was just <coughs> that was the Any other questions on the disorderly building? Sure. That was a major piece, correct? And the bullet, that, yeah, the number of visits, the fines. Yep. And then the next is the subdivision definition. And then that just, it basically just sends the route to the main, the main, yeah, the main regulation definition. And that's pretty standardized throughout multiple communities to right. use that definition. The easiest thing to do. Right. Yeah. They, they, they already uh, bent all the wording in it, so good enough to know. I know Berwick follows it very closely. Right. But it may not be perfect. And, and they changed the statute, so. Correct. Dan also texted and doesn't include medical or dementia. On the um, disorderly the, building. The, the, um, the next one is the village overlay district expansion. So that's basically going up School Street from Cumberland Farms to where Hubcap Hub Heaven used to be. Yes. Right up that section. Yeah, right, right across the street from Aroma Joe's. Right. Yeah. It goes up, you know, yeah. up through that intersection there. Yeah. Um, and what was the reason for that? You know, people requesting it? Or? Yeah. Was one person requested to add into into it, and <coughs> yeah. that's what started it. Because you know, there, there, there are other, you know, well, I don't, I don't know if Rini's cars are still in a legitimate business anymore, but he's still there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is, uh, so. And there are two split lots in this block that you're looking at, and I did discuss that with with James, and he said it's okay if they remain split. 
We want it would be nice to keep it nice and compact and squared around. Right. I know, squared around. <laughs> but I think at one point the planning board expressed an interest to start thinking about a cap of the village overlay. Maybe not a cap, but a hard kind of edge of where we want to see it grow into. Yep. I mean, it, uh, it's a good section, but it's it'll be good to think about as other lots want to keep right. adding into it. Right. Yeah, how far do we want to go with it, like you said, is the outline of it? Well, it, it, you know, the, the school street, you know, Route 9, that is the area that we want businesses to yep. expand on. Yep. You know, and, um, it, um, the person that wants this is supposedly going to be putting a Moe's sandwich shop in right, there. Right, that's yeah. that's their intention. So, I mean, Can that would be... Spot? No, no, right no, next no, to no, it. Next to it. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yeah. They'd be building an addition, I think, to it and then having it right up in the front. So. Yep. So. All right. Yeah, there's a big discussion online mm -hmm. about various sub shops and whose is the best and everything. So. Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay, so the next part is the signs. All right. <laughs> so Envision Berwick came up with amending these sign ordinances. Um, they did a lot of homework they did. on their part. They even, for the public hearing, they even had a slideshow ready to present if people had questions on it. You know, what they were looking for, what they weren't looking for, how it would change a little bit here in town based on the did old they play sign. Their theme song? Uh, no, <laughs> no. People didn't have a question at the public hearing, so they didn't get to show their signs what yeah. they had put together. But they did a lot of research on it, um, and the planning board did talk with them about it. So they did make minor changes in a review on it. So this is the final plan with what they had requested of the planning board. So they're saying no. All signs must be stationary. So. Somebody can't have a sign that's moving? That's, that's correct. correct. Now, this doesn't count for the people that are already have them. This only counts to the people moving forwards. So anyone that already has a sign that is either lit or spinning or anything, okay. they are exempt of that until they go to change that sign. Okay. And it also says here, no balloons for more than one day. So, like... If a car dealership had balloons out for President's Weekend, they could only have it one day, not the weekend? That's, good. That's a good question. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I say I don't think most people put them out for cool. yeah. an extreme amount of time. But So maybe a three-day grace period on that instead yeah, of just a one day? Usually there's a weekend sale mm -hmm. or something. Yep. Yeah. After that, they lose the air anyways. But, yeah, it just seems kind of tight. Yeah, see, nobody had brought up yep. car dealerships. These yeah. were more the business side, yep. even though a car dealership is a business. Yep. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. But uh, yeah, you know, the, the, when they when they have them up, they're going out of business sale for four yep. months. You know, or they even grand it. openings. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, have balloons have, and banners. Yeah, wants to do yeah. a new business. Because yep. we we want to encourage businesses to come in. So if they put up a balloons or banners for you know a couple of days, I can see that. But yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, I think that one day is kind of stringent. Yeah. yeah. So, um, maybe maybe you could put a clause in, you know, as permitted, you know, for special occasions or something. I don't know how that would work in, I, in I the just, planning. I just can't wait to say, you know, no more than three days. Yep. You know, yeah. yep. That seems fair. Yep. Oh. Um, so, is, uh, I know Envision went through it and, and planning went through it. Um, they talked to like the people at Great Falls about this at all, do you know? Or? They were there at the public hearing. Yeah. Yep. And, uh, so there was no and, and they, they're not, they're not, they're, their business is not known for big flashy signs or right. anything. Right. They, they didn't have any concerns or questions for them and they've been working with people to come forward to come into as a business for right. them. So, so yeah, I'm sure if they would have had any questions or concerns, they would yeah. have public. They would have gotten up and said something to it. I, I I spent one year before I was a selectman, one year as an alternate on the planning board, and signs they were a big 
thing at that time because the one over across from Walmart had just gone in with the flashing lights and everything and that that started us you know on this path so I'm glad glad to see that there's you no know, continuing down there so any other questions on the signs um, on B it says you know temporary signs the following signs are exempted but you have real estate signs crossed out, you have political signs, so I'm thinking, is this including those little signs you put out, like if your house is for sale? Those yeah. are exempted. Oh, well, it's crossed out. In the it's crossed right. out. Right, but this was all done, the sign ordinance has already been to the attorney. Those would still be temporary signs at that point. Right. Okay, cause, all right, because yeah, they're crossed out here. Oh, okay, so they fall under so temporary signs. This, yeah. this, this comes from me through our attorney who recommended to eliminate anything that references to content of signs. So that would be a reference to content. But so it is are we saying that temporary signs under temporary would cover signs like my house is for sale, I'm running for office, Boy Scouts are having, you know, recruitment, you right. know, that yeah. kind of thing. Yep. Youth baseball sign ups. Correct. Yes. That yep. all falls under temporary signs. Yep. yep. So that's permit okay. Okay. I like that traditional barber poles were included there. <laughs> Do you know how hard it is to find a barber shop around here? Yeah. A Even good one. It is for where, yeah. yeah. Leroy is right down the street. Yeah. Someone's worth. Yeah. And also, yeah. my daughter. Oak street. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta make an appointment. <laughs> Any other questions on signage? Uh, all lighting shall be hooded or shielded to prevent direct illumination of public streets or abutting properties. Yeah. Um, I think if you on the ground, 90 degrees from the service. So who approves or doesn't? Is this going to be something that Jen's going to approve when any business comes in? Yeah, they have to provide the lighting that they're going to do on the building. And most lighting now comes in with a hood, so it directs it downward. Right. If you drive down 236, there's one over there that they've been waiting for the hood to come in. Mm -hmm. And I believe it's already been put up. It finally came in. But as you were driving down the road, it kept caught you right in the eye. And I have a fairly high vehicle. <laughs> and it was still catching me in the eye. So having the hood on it and having it facing down more, you can still get a good radius for the light to show. Yeah, it's all part of the, the Dark Sky Initiative. You know, Correct. To, to, uh, right. To shield the light, though, is if you look at uh, the BCM's downtown feeds here, you can see the difference is the at nighttime showing the the uh, edge site is you know you can see the street lights and everything here and down and everything and it's very dark, but with the downtown thing, it's glare everywhere mm -hmm. it's just no everything is lit up and no shielding and everything so yes. it is quite a difference so yeah. and is this any different than what we currently have for i know some of the uh, uh marijuana businesses has been before us before about lighting issues right so does all that fall into this they fall well? into this they will okay. if they change any of their lighting but most of it right now is a downward light yep they, I, when I remember it being an issue, they weren't having the shielded lights, right. which now we 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 require make them. them. Yeah, we require, require them. Grandfathered in. They had to swap it. They they they, had had, they already okay. had to. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. But anyone coming in now has to has to already. Okay. And if somebody was to change out their lighting system that they had, they would have to go to the new one if it's voted in. Yep. Okay. All right. So and. and, and Along with that line is one of our, the worst offenders out here are our street pole lights out here, the post lights. Is they're not shielded at all at yep. above, and uh, they, they contribute a lot to the light pollution. Yep. All right, so next is the access to lots. That's all this, right? Yeah. No, that's next this one. one. Yep. 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 That one. So this is to private lots that are subdivided off or resold. Is that what this is? No, it's it's for like a private road. Right. Um, 
more than one family member came in and asked if there was a way that they could do it and not have to pave the road for a family style compound. So um, the gentleman that came in and actually wrote the letter wants to not just put a home on his multiple acres of property, he wants to actually give each one of the children property so they can build what they want. So in order to do it, he'd need up to five lots to be able to put the road in and maintain it, which is what this would allow for, and then not have to pave it because paving a family compound right from the get-go, and as you know, the price of, price of paving right now is extremely high. So this would allow a family compound to go in and still keep the road nice because you have to have it. You have to still have your road standards, the compaction, the, the, the ditching, the... Correct, the culverts, the ditching, everything. And including coming off the main road has to be paved in so far. So that would allow for a smooth access for either plowing, ditching, grading, whatever the case might be. But this does require, if you go to the second page of it, six or more dwelling units, that has to have a lot more. So that's where the paving comes in and the homeowners associate road maintenance agreement is from three to five dwelling units, even though they're your children and chances are mom and dad are gonna be plowing the road, but there is still a road maintenance agreement that they would have to agree to. So what happens with the, somebody, one of the kids decides to sell and it's no longer a family compound? Well, that still the road maintenance agreement would be in place if they had more than five then you have to have a homeowners association. I believe that's in there. Because it's all the three to five, so the road maintenance is there. And when you go to six or more, it actually tells you what you have to have for your base layers, how much of each different type of soil. So if they sold off the lots, and they exceeded a certain number of family to non-family, they would have to meet the new requirements at that time. It, Did so. This is yeah. No. No. It, 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 this would be any. Way. This would be any dwelling units at that point within a on a five. Like if there was, it wouldn't just be for families. It, this this makes it for every. If if someone for had a big private. chunk of lot, subdivided it in five. And then they wouldn't. They they would just have to, these standards to go by. So instead of tarring it at three, they would they'd be tarring it at six. Isn't that subverting the sublot thing we already have in place, though? If it's not yeah, family, I... no. It it's still going to be a subdivision, so they have to go through that. But if they just you have a hundred acres, you want to divide off five acres for someone that's interested in property. You sell it to them and you wait five years. They don't sell for five years. You decide you need money and you sell another five acres. When you get up to three, so in 30 years, he'd have time to build up the money to be able to pave the road. Jeff just texted, it isn't just for family, it's every Correct. private road. Yeah, it's every, every private, private road. road. Yep. Okay. But that was the example that was brought in. Got yep. it, okay. Yep. It was the easiest one to explain. Yep. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So this would be for all private roads, especially the new ones that could potentially go in because in some of your zones you have a lot of acreage still out there available. Mm. So, the cur so currently the land use ordinance is at three and Correct. it's got to be paved if it's a private road. Correct. Correct. Yep. So essentially my street that's four and paved but it's a private road. If they had built all five lots, could still be dirt if they didn't do that. Correct. Yes. And according to this, yeah. you would have to have a road maintenance agreement. With the town. So they'd have to come before the planning board to make sure that that agreement fits for And it stays to the standards. Case, yes. So. Yep. Okay. Yep. okay. Yep. I'm, I'm, I'm still having trouble with it, actually. It's, it's, uh, it's the construction piece that people forget when they uh, take and look at this. The road standards for building the road still have to be met through the town of Berwick. So when you look at the six or more, you'll see so many inches. The width of the road is there. The base is to be covered with two inches thick or th of three quarter inch crushed gravel. 
those are part of the road standards for the construction of the road. I guess my question is though, what's to prevent somebody from putting a four house subdivision in and wanting to leave it a dirt road to to avoid that's to what avoid, I'm thinking. To, to avoid, avoid paving out of There, there wouldn't be. Like it they the, could do the, it at that point. The road width would still have to be maintained. Yep. But it doesn't need to be paved. That is correct. Correct. It just doesn't need to be paved, but you've got a road maintenance agreement in place for between three to five. If somebody's going to join the Zoom, if you have questions, you should be on any minute. Magically, she appears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I agree with Linda's statement. It seems to be subverting our, you know, subdivision right. ordinances. So I understand they is, have to maintain the road, but what they're saying is they got to they got to maintain the the road up to the standards, except for paving. Right. The only piece that'll be removed will be the paving, but your road maintenance agreement covers that the road will still be maintained and taken care of, like in the spring, in the winter, and then regrading again either spring or fall so that the roads aren't all ready and everything. So how is that different from the larger corporations that come in and want to put a subdivision in? That pave the road? To, and then we require them to pave the road. Right, but a larger corporation would have the backing to be able to afford to pay that, whereas a it. smaller group... Like you just said, that's an extra expense that they just they would, put in. They would have to be more, they'd have to be making six or more at that point. Right, to To, to make it to be paved. Okay. Um, when we had the public hearing, no one commented on this either. So. I, I just, uh, it's... I guess I'm trying to wrap my head around it is if I got my hundred acres of land, like you said, yep. and I want to cut off 10 acres and put in four house lots because I want some money. So yep. I sell the four house lots. I maintain it to the standard, but I don't have to pave it. But if I'm a corporation that comes out of state and I see I'm going to buy that 10 acres and I'm going to put in a subdivision, I'm required to pave it. Only if you put in more, more than, than six, six units. Six or more. Six yep. or yeah. more six units. Yep. But still, correct. So I could stop at five. Yes, correct. they could stop at five, and after five, then they would have to tar it. If they went after five, it's just, it's it's moving it from. So if I have a hundred acres and I take these, I got a hundred acres. I take these ten, and I put four lots over here, and then two years later I come up here and I take four lots over here. I don't have to pave either one of them. Correct. Oh. I, I don't like that idea. I was going to say, I guess my question is, yeah, are we going to be okay with the, watching subdivisions pop up that aren't going to pave? They're just small mini subdivisions mm -hmm. that right. are not paved. Right. 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 And I think that might cause an issue with the planning board down the road with somebody. Yep. Right. Yep. Yeah, that's, I, that's the issue, is it? I mean, it, it's built to a gravel standard, so the compaction and the, it's going to be 20 feet wide. But still, like, the reason we have the policy on the books is. A lot of the dirt roads that have eight or so houses on it, the condition are not great, and then the town sometimes will have to get involved with life safety issues, things like that. So I see both sides. I mean, I see both sides. I, I get that, and I understand they don't want to pay, but it's it's on the other side. It's oh well, if you're an individual homeowner who's got acreage to sell, which you're right to do, mm -hmm. you know, I'm going to do pop up, small pop up things as opposed to one big huge one that's 16 and then of course they would fall and be required to pave it. Now so if you think about it doing those small pop-ups is probably going to cost you as much as if you were to combine them all together and just do one subdivision because all those pop-ups you still have to go through subdivision planning whether it be a small subdivision or a large subdivision. What if it was set to a certain time limit? Like what if it's every 10 years up to every 10 years of the subdivision? Because then it would protect it, it time-wise. So, like you said, it wouldn't be a pop-up next two years later. It's another pop-up. Right. You know, if you do it in one spot, it should be considered possibly for that um, subdivision. It has to stay like that for a certain amount of time. Yeah, like five That's, years or something. Yeah. Before you, I, yeah. yeah, I just think, I just think someone's going to get creative. they got a lot, I, of, a lot of land, and they're going to start. No. Yeah, there's always somebody that's going to be out there trying to circumvent all the rules. Right, and then if you have all these little pop-up things, now that's a lot more on 
Jen's crew who's going out trying to if there's a problem with the road. Yep. Yeah. That's just more we're piling on. So, so this whole issue here was brought forward because that one guy originally came to you? Yeah, there was one person that came in and then somebody else, he came to see Jennifer and then someone else called me and asked me if this was a possibility and it was under discussion at that point. I did not obtain anything in writing because we already had that portion in writing and I may need to get it a second person to put it into writing also. It comes Good up evening. it comes up a lot, but Jenna can tell you more than I can. Good evening everyone. I decided to join the meeting. <laughs> Good evening, Jen. Jen. Thanks, Jen. I do I need to tell you guys I have a little bit of Mickey in the background, so I apologize. No um you're gonna hear Mickey now, so sorry. Um all right, so what happened is, Tom, um, if I if I just may explain this a little bit better to you. Um, what happened is a couple of years ago this guy came to the um, code enforcement office, James was sitting there too. He uh, wanted to put in an additional house on a private road for his daughter. Um, he wanted his grandkids to kind of move closer to be near him, um, but he knew that there was a paving standard. The problem was is sometimes on these private roads they're built to a standard. Um, once they pave it, sometimes there's a water you know, runoff issue, whatever. So that's what he was nervous about. Um, since he came in, and he's actually the one that wrote the letter that if you guys have it in front of you, I'm not sure. But no, this, is a, this is a recurring issue. Like, people come to us all the time wanting to put a third house on a road and, and not have to pay, like on a private road. Um, I will tell you that the standard that you have in front of you aligns pretty well with surrounding towns. Um, it, is a, it, it is coming up a lot more. It is a big issue. I understand the whole uh, mini subdivision comment from Linda, and I agree with her. We, I don't think we really thought through that, um, to be honest with you. But it's mostly to bring families together, but it wouldn't be a standard just for families and you know siblings, things like that. It would have to be a standard for everyone. Every private road, every dwelling. Yeah. Uh, I just think five's extreme. I, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm okay with going three or maybe even four. I think going at five, you're setting yourself up more than just I, private, I, per, 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 a private lot. Or a year yeah. gap. Like or, if you build these, yeah. or, and this five year gap, you gotta wait five years before you go. Yeah, yeah or wait five or 10 years, yeah. Yeah, right. just wait five or 10 years on the sub. Well, let's see, in, in the R3 district um, subdivisions, is it that they still only allowed to sell three lots a year? They can only, they can only build three a year per subdivision. In, in the R3 district. Yeah, right. in the same subdivision. They so, in. one of these guys comes in with their family compound and wants to do five in an R3. Is that right. possible? Not in this, not in... I, I think, personally, I, I, think, I think we need to have more discussion on this. I think this isn't ready for prime time, really. Um, and I, I, you know, is we have been fighting for years to improve the road system in Berwick. And the private road system, as James said around here, sucks. And no other way to say it. And you talk to the, the uh, fire, you talk to the police, and it's terrible. And I can just see this becoming more of an issue down the road, you know, as it expands. As, um, so this one, this one I'd like to put on hold is, you know, and, and discuss this more. I think it needs more. No coverage. Just flushing here. out. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not opposed to. I just think we need to flush out a few questions. So, is um, so. I agree. Good. So we'll work on that one tomorrow. All right. So yep. moving on. Yep. So I'll let Tammy lead this one. <laughs> <laughs> for the appointments for the planning board, eleven point two. Having a greater board to take and have an applicant come before a board with a more diverse person voting diverse background diverse history would allow the applicant to get a better rounded board in which to either approve or deny their application so going to seven regular members since i've been here i have not had any meetings that had less than five members in attendance and you would only need five for the quorum. 
it's two thirds. Four, four, and four, 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 sorry, four. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so when I talked to the planning board about it, they thought it was a great idea to be able to bring their alternates up to regular voting members at whatever meeting they're there. It also helps the board, the chair doesn't have to remember, okay, this person can vote, this person can't. I ran meeting. into that when I was an and, alternate. <laughs> and then this one can this week and that one can't this week. So right. it makes it a lot smoother and it gives well, your applicants. To... Go ahead, Noah. Well, prior to being uh, on the site board, I was also an alternate on the planning board. Yep. And I believe in, in the several months that I was in that position, there was only ever one meeting where I was actually a voting member. Um, so I, I can definitely back up your statement that it does not see, it's not a board that has a high turnover, it doesn't have a high absentee rate. Um, it typically, if all the seats are filled, you know, if there's if if you have the full five and the two alternates, you'd be hard pressed to have a meeting with less than five people present. Um, so uh, I, I totally understand what your what your what your goal is here. So um, I would I would definitely support such a such an idea. Yeah, my my only question was going to be about the quorum, but you no, know, it doesn't sound like it's a problem, and uh, you know. Yeah, there seems to be plenty of interest in the planning board right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we have a full, and, full board. And and before any special meetings like site walks or public hearings are scheduled, the chair always asks, are you available? Right. So hence, we can get a b greater number of people at the site walk so everybody's able to see everything and you don't have to re-explain. Same thing when you come to the public hearing. If you have everybody there and then an issue comes up through the process of the public hearing, when you go to the next meeting, you're all still on board, right. and you don't have to go back and review things. So it's a it's a time saver too, along with having a greater board in which to draw from. Uh, I just have one technical question here. It says that the term of each member shall be three years. Then down below, the term of all officers shall be one year with eligibility for reelection. So every year we'd have to reappoint the chair, vice chair, and secretary. Yeah, that's oh, just okay. the that's just the formalities Those are the of it. Yep. Just yeah. the officers. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's in their bylaws. Got it. Yeah, that's why though, like every year, every year they make me chairman. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Whether I want or not. I know that feeling now, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so should that be officers, instead of, officers instead of offices, every or every three years? What's, correct. What's the grammatical? Yeah, that should correct. be officers. That's why I think it's really <laughs> okay. Off. That's just a typo. Organization rules. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, I can be in, absolutely in support of that. Anything that it seems like it just streams line, streamlines the whole process. Yeah. And, so. Yeah, we'll we'll figure out the appointments and stuff. So yeah. it's not a problem. Okay. Next. So next is the subdivision regulations. Is that with just more of a standard, what we're seeing now with? The fire chief requested the change of this. So he's, um, it's for wider equipment. Um, okay. So if there's cars parked on the side of the road, that if they need two vehicles to get through, they still have that room to do it. And everything currently done is grandfathered in? Yes, correct. Even though we don't grandfather things. <laughs> Exempt. Exempt, I guess would be exempt the, everything yeah. that's in yes. yes. Yeah. Non conformed, yeah. <laughs> and this would only be things designated subdivision as opposed to the difference we just talked about the private. So okay. correct. that's correct. Yeah, because the, the uh, article twelve design guidelines comes directly from the subdivision regulations. I don't have a problem with it. Anything that helps the fire department's fine with me. <laughs> yep. Yeah, me too. Oh, yeah. Oh. Just. Yeah. Okay. And then the next is the adopting the building codes, the new building codes, and energy conservation codes, and existing the plumbing codes. And with Jenna online, she could probably explain it so much better. <laughs> because she's the one that has to be enforcing these. Right. and. Yep. 
You hear us, Jim? Hi, guys. She's still jamming out the name. All right, so the uh, state has moved to um, increase some of the codes, and we can't obviously be lesser than them. So right now, the town of Berwick is on all two 2015 codes except for the Energy Conservation Code, which we're on 2009. Now, what we're, what we're asking for is the town of Berwick to adopt the 2018 codes. But for the energy code, I don't know if you have the updated sheet in front of you. We're asking for the town to adopt the 2021 stretch energy conservation code instead of the 2015 energy code. Um, the 2021 um, stretch code is more um, strict but there's a lot of updates in the 2015 code that just don't make sense and that's why we're we want to move towards the 2021 stretch code with a lot of the other towns um, in Maine doing the same thing. Jim. If you have a question, go ahead. I was just going to say, could you get us a copy of that? The, just absolutely. The, 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 yep. stretch yeah. the stretch code? The stretch code, yeah. I mean, yes, I'd say coming up with current standards would be... <laughs> Yes. Ideal. Yeah. I just, I just want to make sure that yeah, some of these two. We're not, we're not asking for anything extreme. Old. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, is, is this something that has to be on the warrant, on the ballot, or is this? I, believe we, yeah, I, believe, so. I believe we do have to put it on the warrant. Okay. One of the things we talked about is you, know, you try to frame the language to say whether it's give the select board authority to adopt subsequent updates or the town automatically updates whatever Mubeck adopts right well that's what I, that's what i was thinking is, is you know is you know as the new codes come in you know we should just automatically you know you know have them accepted as and you could do that with this year's warrant also yeah. yep. so uh, i don't have any problem with any of that no not by me yeah, that'd be perfect because going forward, like uh, the state increased their codes of in July of last summer, and we would have been able to increase ours right away instead of waiting. So yeah. that'd be great. So that will work on that Let's language. Work on the language of it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Anything else you guys want to talk about? Yeah. Any questions for Tammy and Mike from anybody? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Enjoy yeah, your evening you. now. <laughs> All right. Unfinished business, we have none. Well, we actually have a lot, but nothing tonight. <laughs> um, tell manager report. There is a lot going on, a lot of, a lot of great things, and uh, things are really heading in the right direction. Uh, I'm going to be covering more of what's going on uh, with my update with BCM. I think that we're going to schedule one for next week to, to do an update. Jody um, sent in a note if you'd like to go ahead to post the roads um, starting February 28th. Let's see. I think it's tab 11. Yeah. So I'll just read down through the list. Um, it's Pine Hill Road from Sullivan Street to Messengers Bridge. Little River Road from Messengers Bridge to North Burrick Town Line. Long Swamp Road from Little River to town, Lebanon Town Line. Cranberry Meadow Road from Pine Hill Road to Old Sanford Road. Old Sanford Road from Cranberry Meadow to North Burrick Town Line. Diamond Hill, Old Sanford Road to Little River Road. Wentworth Road from School Street to Route 4. Blackberry Hill Road from Berwick Road to Portland Street, Guinea Road from Blackberry Hill Road to School Street, and Old Pine Hill Road North from School Street to Pine Hill Road. And these, these are the ones we close every year, you know, from the frost in the ground. Is, um, is actually, we've been fairly lucky this year. Is, uh, February 28th, I think, is we're doing it in the middle of February, the last couple of years. So... Um, I'll make I'll make a motion that we uh, post the roads as I just read them off. I second the motion. Any further discussion? If not, I'll go through the roll. Is Noah? Yes. Linda? Yes. Mike? Yes. And myself is a yes. So 
get, get your gravel and stuff by the end of the week. <laughs> we ended up having one property go to foreclosure and that's 46 route 236. And I need the board's authorization to auction the property. Is this the only one that we've had go into foreclosure? Yes. Is we, we had what 11 that were in, so is uh, we've done really well this year. And uh, I'm assuming that we went through all the usual things of trying to work things out with payment plans and everything, and it just didn't work out. Well, well, this, <laughs> this, this particular person uh, uh, is deceased with no family oh. member, so this is. Oh. Oh, I think I know who it is then. Yeah. Huh? So, um, okay, here's, you need the authorization to go ahead. Is, um, is, uh, do I we have I'll, a motion? Yeah, I'll make a motion to authorize the foreclosure. We have a motion, we have a second. I'll second the motion. All right, without any further discussion, I'll go through the roll. Is Noah? Yes. Linda? Yes. Mike? Yes. And myself is a yes. How long does that take to do that? I actually don't. Lisa, can you bail me out on this question? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nope. Oh, oh, yeah, so on the there you go. <laughs> um, I honestly don't know. I've never gone through the auction mm -hmm. process before. So I guess, I mean, we have to give notice. We have to post um, mm -hmm. applicants. Okay. And, and, yeah. and I honestly, yeah, I, we... I think it, isn't it a bid process? Um, yes, typically, is uh, we put it out for sealed bids. <coughs> so, is um, and it, I think this is the first one we've done in probably about four years <coughs> or so. So it's very rare that we ever have to do this. So, is uh, so. okay. Right, we can provide an update on the policy and timeline next meeting. Okay. So. Let's see, um, just a quick note: the Diamond Hill Bridge. It's been posted for five tons for a little while. Um, we have a full engineer design for it. Our engine, I've talked with the engineer. We're trying to get it back on the DOT list to do 50-50 funding. We're not sure if the time, timing's gonna work out or if the, the funding hadn't been there for the program. It's there, but given the weight limit, trying to work with the engineer because it's just it's kind of terrifying to have that five ton yeah. Limit on that bridge. <laughs> so um, the engineer, I mean, he he said we, and we're I'm talking with him tomorrow. I've been talking with him the past couple of weeks. Um, he's advising possibly hold off on um, going on for bid for the spring for fall construction due to the cost that to possibly wait until fall to do the bid and then do construction in the winter. And that also could align better with DOT funding as well, but I'll keep you keep you updated with that. Yeah, if we if we get any money from the DOT, I'm willing to wait. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And that will be a warrant warrant article. Um, All right. Um, meeting with CMP and Consolidated Communications and Great Falls Construction and the Diggle Hole Once Committee next week to discuss underground utilities to coordinate CMP consolidated communications to get the power lines underground. That's in the downtown area here yep. you're talking about. Yep, so. the immediate school street. This town square. Town square pretty much. It's, Everywhere except for I mean the, the immediate town square with the exception of Wilson Street. And let's see. And that's all I have for my update. Any questions for the town manager? If not, we'll move on. I just have one thing. Um, the motion for the auction, you motion to foreclose and not auction. We already foreclosed. Oh. I'll amend my motion to, to there we go. Yeah. Thank you, Noah. <laughs> <laughs> So I guess the next second. <laughs> yeah, so we have an amendment. So I'll go through the roll again. Noah? Yes. Linda? Yes. Mike? Yes. And myself is a yes. 
Good catch, Patty. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Lisa. You're welcome. All right. Good uh, job, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Selectman's Communications is I have uh, something from Southern Maine Planning and Development is uh, talk about what a great job they do and want more money from us. <laughs> is, uh, it, it, they do work. We work very closely with them on a lot of our projects. It's, it's worked out well for us. So is, uh, they're asking for a 3% increase in their fees, which... I think that should already be. Yeah, a dues amount for the 2022-2023, they, they increased it, but the total is $2,687. Is that incorporated in the budget already? I believe so. Yeah, yeah. it'd be in the um, planning contracted services. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Um, okay. So, so, other than that, is nothing really. Uh, well, Comcast sent me a list of all the notices that they've sent to everybody over the past year so I could have them on file. So, as everybody will be glad to know that all those notices you have about changing, uh, you know, this channel to that channel and dropping that channel is, is all on file. That brings us to our account payable. We have a payable warrant number 50 for February 17th. 2022 for the amount of $75,144.02. We have account payable warrant 51 for February 22nd, 2022 for the amount of $258,152.89. And a payroll warrant number 52 for February 24th, 2022 for the amount of $72,000. Four hundred eighty-five dollars and fifty-two cents, and I will make a motion. We pay our bills. A second. A motion and a second. We'll go through the roll. Is Noah? Yes. Linda? Yes. Mike? Yes. And myself is a yes. So talk about downtown vision under new business is uh, VHB Burke Downtown Project Planning Proposal. So this particular project, um, it's in front of the one Sullivan building where Corner Point's expanding into. They have uh, historically have had flooding into their building. And what happens is uh, we have one culvert that is responsible for a lot of drainage. One pass of the plow can, of can gum it up and then it starts melting and it backs into their building. Um, you know, given the fact that we have a business expanding in there, um, I yep. think to work on a concept and to not have their building be flooded would be in the best interest of everybody. Um, and what this proposal would do is take a look at what culverts need to be addressed, curbing, and uh, other drainage to, to take to take a look at that in the entire area right there. Yeah. It, yeah, it can't be on public works to make one pass with a plow and go and shovel it out. We need a better yeah. stormwater system in there. Yeah, yeah that, historically over many years that's been a problem there. Um, and even before Corner Point moved in, they were having problems with that. And as James said, is uh, all the water comes into that one storm drain there. And then I believe the culvert actually goes underneath the building. It does. Yeah, so yeah. Is that, that's another complication. And uh, you know, if we're doing all the work downtown anyways, is with everything, it makes sense and, you know, to look at that and try to figure out what we can do to alleviate it. So, so what is this contractor looking to do? I see on here it says it doesn't include... A list of items so what are they this would be specifically they'd come down the stormwater team would come down take a look at the area and make recommendations on curbing should go here you should add a catch, catch basin here they'll take a look at the storm drains there there is suspicion that the storm drain underneath the building 
It's collapsing? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I suspect. Oh, yeah, it's probably been there for years. Yeah, so. Uh, <laughs> that's what DOT said. They said that it's losing capacity, which. Right. And and we are you know, also gaining capacity because you know the storms, uh, the rainstorms are getting heavier and more and more duration. So we are getting more rain. You know, it's yep. what last year we had what four storms of six inches or more last summer. Right. It was, uh, crazy. So um, yeah, I, I think that you know it, it's a thirty four hundred dollar expense is what they're looking at. Is um, before doing work. Yeah. Right, and <laughs> the whole idea is to move these projects along to get to more conceptual. The more fleshed out these are, the more we can put them into funding. And yeah. right, right. So, um, do you need approval? Is that what you're looking for? Please. Yep. <laughs> All right. I make a motion that we approve spending the thirty-four hundred dollars to VHB. I'll second that. Um, I'll, ju I'll just make a comment. Is VHB has worked with us before multiple times, haven't they? Yeah. yeah now, yeah. so they're a known entity. You know, we've worked with them. So, um, with that, I'll go through the roll. Is Noah? Yes. Linda? Yes. Mike? Yes. And myself is a yes. We had one one proposal from this group, and they're about wrapping up the project, so it'll be a finished product to share with the board. So. Yes. All right, we have no abatement. Second public comment. Yep. Mike figures he's got to use the podium. Well, so. while I'm here, it just dawned on me. Yep. Um, Mike LaRue, 263 Pine Hill Road. Um, we've had an overabundance of solar arrays come through, and we may want to think about putting a moratorium on them for a little bit. Um, we've put through three, I want to say, yeah. It, within a short period of time, right. and that's not including the ones that we've already added. And I have a feeling there's more coming. So right. I think, as I recall, I think James brought it up too before. But I think CMP's got a natural cap on that, don't they? Of what they can put in. Is that size-wise, they're now to what two and a half megawatts? Two megawatts. From, yeah. yeah, two megawatts from five. Oh. But we have one that just got extended another year. But that one's uh, bigger. That's five. Oh, that's a big one, yeah. yeah, that's a five megawatt one that's coming in on that. Yeah. The rest so far have been the two. All right. Might definitely be for our discussion for our, for our next meeting. Yep, for our discussion. Meetings, yeah. So. I'll, yeah. I'll double double check on that. And uh, but all the projects that are still pending are the same projects that were pending before when I was first in front yeah. because uh, I was in front of the board for a yes. moratorium as well. Yes. But yeah. So there are no new. Projects. It seems like the gold rush is coming. Okay. You still see it, but well, yeah, I, we're, I, we're still yeah. seeing them. So yeah. you know yeah. what I'm saying? They're, yeah. the, they're the same. They're the same entities that they just made their way to you at this point. Yeah, well, they're coming back. One that's been a couple of times to us because a lot of things have changed. Right, right. A lot of things. Yes, yes. <laughs> I've been following that yep. one. Yeah. <laughs> Step to the mic, Tammy. Yep. I got an email today requesting information on another one. Well, yeah. They didn't give me enough information to tell you where it might go, but I sent it back saying this is what I need yep. to let you know. Yes, no, maybe. So they're still out there. Oh. Might look at a, just a total megawatt cap, go that route. Right. Or that. Just have a discussion. I think that maybe the next mm -hmm. uh, joint meeting. Total, we have total we can... megawatt or, or acreage, right. you know, coverage. Yep. You know, is we don't we don't want half a borough to be covered by solar panels. Right. So. Maybe a quarter of it, but not half of well, it. Well, as long as you don't see it from the roads right now, it's okay. Right, but, yeah. uh, <laughs> Thank you, that's it. Hi. Go for Can it. Not me? Of course, Jen. Okay, hi, guys. So another thing, too, about the solar um, regulations in Berwick, there really aren't any. I think um, to take it a step further, too, um, if you're, we're not going to cap them, kind of like our subdivision regulations, I think we should write some solar regulations. Um, Everyone who comes in front of the board, they all have different plans. We get that, but I do think that there should be like a checklist in place. That's just my opinion. Yeah. Thank you. I'm gonna be something we're gonna have a workshop on. 
or schedule a special okay. workshop for that and the marijuana. Yeah, yeah, having a good conversation. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. it's definitely worth we'll have a moratorium that. meeting. Yes, yeah. I mean, I think those two alone will, will take, up <laughs> take up a whole up, meeting. Take up some time. Yeah, yeah. a moratorium meeting. <laughs> Thank you. Thank guys. you, have guys. A good night. Um, all right, we have no executive session tonight. Other business, non agenda items. Um, we we are going to adjourn, but then we're going to do a budget review afterwards and we will stay online. So, is um, motion to adjourn? I guess I'll make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> second. Motion to adjourn a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right, so now we can go into our budget. Does anybody need a yeah, I'm break? Have. Give, give us a couple minutes. <laughs>
people. Okay, we're back. <clears throat> Where do you want to stop? I got, I got a brief uh, presentation here. I can take over the screen. All right. So just a quick year to year on the biggest increases and what's going on. Starting from the top, um, we benefited from a pretty hefty subsidy last year. The school returned roughly $600,000 that we benefited from um, with a grant that they got. And it really helped offset our taxes uh, the previous year. So with that subsidy gone, plus the typical increases we project, um, lead to about a $800,000 difference. Um, the next piece, capital improvements, that fluctuates from year to year depending on if we're doing buildings or um, you know, vehicles, things of that nature. So from a year to year, um, last year we only funded roads. Uh, this year we're funding the um, request for fire, police, um, and we'll get more into that. I actually have a slide on that as well. Uh, this increase, uh, or this, this budget, um, the fire includes fully funding the um, part-time uh, request to have the positions fully funded for the safer grant. Um, in the meantime, adding that second per diem position. And you can see uh, increases um, from there. So that goes in order. Those are our top eight increases. Um, and there's several more that are in the 30,000 or below. But that gives you an idea of the changes from year to year. So education is the top one? Is that people requesting? That is the school. Right, OK. And this is the budget breakdown, uh, including education and capital improvements. Education is 46.4%. Um, just interesting to see where funds go. And I'll have this. I'll have this on the town website so people can view it. I was going to say. I was going to say. I think that's the big thing that having that side to, side by side comparison. I think yeah. the other thing to note too is as Berwick grows, what the fire department needs in response time is something to put out there for people to understand too. You know, the number of calls that are going through that department right now and how tapped they really are. Yeah. Because at some point, if we start growing on the other side of town, we're going to have to start talking about a substation. Right. It's <laughs> a stretch. That's a stretch in response when you're looking for volunteers to show up yeah. first there and then to there. It's a huge delay. That's why it's important to keep everything centralized as much as possible. And maybe not <laughs> allow... Well, Correct. Private roads is one way of doing, doing that. I can read this because it's probably a pretty small font. Uh, fire... Uh, $100,000 um, to go towards aerial, aerial replacement. Chief Plant did request $250,000. Um, this truck, um, I was talking to Chief Plant today, it's cost the town, um, it's been expensive to fix and keep it keep it going. Well, we uh, spent a lot of money on that in the last few years. Yep. And that's the one with the engine going in it now, yep. correct? And they, that, cost, that just cost $10,000. So it's, about time to start thinking about replacing it. So this do we do we have reserve funds for transitional vehicles going out for either the fire department or the police? Do we have a separate reserve account? Not for it's not built up. This is this would be the start to. Yeah. They do. There is a start we, of a we, 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 we had we had in the past, and and it got cut back and cut back. So it, the last several years, it's been we have just been funding the money we need for that year to do the replacements so okay. yeah, the, we used we used to be able to we used to have the money in there you know ahead of time for the cruises and, right. the, mm -hmm. and the and things like that but we haven't been able to do that recently so this is you know keep trying to get back into that yeah I mean, the more i mean the more we save the right less we have to borrow I mean, that's uh, those are the typical, both for fire and police, command unit, portable radios, PPE, hose replacement. Those are the typical capital uh, buckets that are requested year to year. 
like I said last year, we didn't fund any of these. The main DOT match, um, as long as we put away $25,000 a year, um, we have another year to go. We'll have enough to match a million dollar grant for sidewalks and improvements of the streets right up on School Street and Sawmill Hill coming across the intersection from the, uh, the bridge. Okay. Uh, I know one point um, is considering increasing the road budget from 600000 to 750000 um, You'll notice at the bottom I'm, I'm proposing we use a healthy amount of undesignated fund balance. Um, and I don't know if that additional road funding, if we'd want to have it come from undesignated fund balance or if that's something we want to pay through property taxes. We'll get to that discussion when we get to the bottom of the list right there. Okay, <laughs> the, the next um, piece there, um, I'll actually go through police real quick. So vehicle replacement is a lease program um, and then building improvements, equipment, technical improvement for police. Jumping back to public works. Um, Jody had re requested $450,000 um, and in order to fully offset our capital, um, that's part of the reason for reducing the area, area replacement from 250 to 100 and the proposal now is to fund half of the expansion this year and fund the rest the second half next year and that will help accommodate as we take over 236 and 9 and 4, we need additional trucks. And like I think I mentioned last meeting, their break room smells like gasoline and they don't really have a place to. No, their facility definitely <laughs> needs. Oh, no, I read, I read online that they don't need any new facilities there. That's all perfect. <laughs> it's all good. I put in there um, bond for the bridge. I have to talk to Lisa if that should move into the a different expense line. But the intention there would be to have the first year funding when we go and bond for the Diamond Hill Bridge. Recreation capital, that was also reduced um, from, at first I plugged in 80,000, but down to 25,000. There is $50,000 already in a fund plus impact fees so roughly $117,000 to work with. Uh, I met with Angela today and um, it's close. I, th I think the phase she wanted was a little bit higher, but um, with the impact fees replenishing over the year, I think we can get a pretty exciting first phase done at Memorial Field, pretty substantial. For Town Hall ADA improvements, that's imagined to be the vertical lift. I informally met with um, a civil engineer firm to start looking at the structural in that stairwell. Um, I'm actually going to get them a cut sheet so they look at can look at the measurements. But I mean, on the first look, he seems like doable. Yeah, like I said, that that first guy, he his, his machine didn't fit in that opening. But I, I, like I said, I was sure there was some other machine that would fit in that opening. <laughs> so yes. <laughs> yeah, and that and that's to get access to the auditorium, more like um, you know a smaller elevator, seventy thousand um, dollars. Yep, and the other other piece in town hall, secure building from leaks. So that'd be mostly it'd be um, brick ceiling on the other sides of the tunnel. Gutters, I think gutters is the biggest bang for our buck right now, getting the water away from our building. HVAC improvements, the big one I think would be getting a dehumidifier, an HVAC dehumidifier downstairs, because it is musty well, a lot in of summertime. Mold, yeah, a lot of mold builds up. You know, and, uh, so. But it also includes a humidifier for the winter because it's also dry in the winter. Uh, last one is repointing the bricks at the town hall steps. So the undesignated fund balance. 
is um, how much do we have in that total? You have that figure, Lisa? Yeah, 4.5 million. 4.5, and we have to keep by, by, by ordinance, we have to keep what, 12%? 12.5. 12.5, no, in it. Which is a, a million. Yeah, so. <clears throat> So, you know, I, I had brought up the want to, you know, fund the roads more, you know, is, is, you know, Steve and I had talked about this over the last couple of years, and, you know, really we should be going up to a million dollars, you know, to, to get ahead of what we really need, is, uh, we've been fortunate in the last few years to get what we have with the 600,000, but I, I really think, you know, with, we have, as I said in my email to you guys, is, we have some big roads coming up, and we need to, you know, really start looking at them. And I hate doing them piecemeal. Is I, I think we need really need to start looking at total projects. And I noticed that with the plan that you gave us earlier today, that it doesn't show top coating of any of the roads, and, and that's something that we really need to do. You know, we've done a base coat on on several roads, several couple of them are. A couple years old Step now, and if we don't get the top coat on them, we're going to lose those roads, and we've you know, wasted our money. So, yep. is um, uh, Lisa is taking another hundred and fifty thousand out of the undesignated surplus. Um, how would that impact us? Two hundred fifty thousand, I mean, not one hundred and fifty. No, one hundred fifty. No, one fifty. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but then okay. we're not sus we're not yeah. sustaining it, and that's the one time take out this year. Right. So. Uh, well, <clears throat> we can use it. I mean, it it is there at the moment. I mean, we. This is a, the 4.5 is the balance of the undesignated fund as of June 30, um, 2021. I mean, un, undesignated fund balance fluctuates on a daily basis depending on revenues and expenses. So there's no way to really estimate what it's going to be on June 30, 2022. But I would I would hope that it's very close to 4.5. So we can definitely take another 250 without without an issue to maintain the 12.5 percent that we need. Right. Right. But if we do that this year, then we get, we're going to be faced with the same problem next year. Where we have to go up. Well, well, Should we go up a little bit? More than I mean, if we went, if we were at six hundred thousand last year, we should budget for more than six hundred thousand this year. Maybe not the whole two hundred and fifty thousand that we we want to put well, in there, but at least split it something, because we have to get on a path of. Right. We 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 have used the undesignated surplus in the past just for this purpose. Yeah. Right. And and, and and no, every budget season when we come in, we we always take money from the undesignated. It, it's Lisa is is for the people that don't understand what the undesignated surplus is. Could you just give us a brief explanation of what it is and where the money comes from that goes into that part? Well, the undesignated fund balance comes from um, revenues that we over collect over and above what we budget for. And I mean, you know, budgets are only estimates. And then expenses, if, they, if the expense, um, if all the expense budgets are underspent, whatever is left there goes back to the, closes back to the undesignated fund. And also um, anything that's not used, which which is still in the expense budget, but not not like the regular departments, is the um, overlay. Right. Whatever's left there closes back to the undesignated fund. So, so it, it, the this is this is money that the town has that 
wasn't budgeted but came into us. This is so, money we right. already have. I, I understand that, but there's yeah. no guarantee from year to year that's going to be in right. there. Yeah. Correct. Right. So, and oh, go ahead. I mean, everything is a guess. The school, you know, the increase in the school, the increase in the county, um, at this point, we're, we're pretty much basing our calculations on the maximum that the assessors have told us that would they'll have in an additional uh, appraised value or assessed value sorry so um a lot can happen between now and tax commitment right and and i'm not opposed to taking some money out of the undesignated fund i'm just saying for budgetary purposes moving forward we need to start increasing that needle maybe we don't do the whole 850 obviously we take money out of the undesignated fund but the budgeted 600,000 we need to increase that every single year to meet like right. as you said the, right. the well, roads are, are in rough shape well we need, we need to increase it just because of inflation right you know, the exactly. cost of materials have gone up the cost of materials everything so, else so, so. Um, I, 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 like I said, I, I still feel that, you know, we, we should do 750000 this year. And, uh, and, uh, I agree. Uh, I just think it shouldn't all come out of the undesignated fund. So, so, so take, you know, what do you want to do? Do 650 with... With, but in the budget. With, with the regular budget. the tax revenue. Because we need to slowly each year start, even if you did 625 and the next year you did 650 and then six, right. you know what I mean? But you, you need to start planning, have it in the budget right. so that you start planning moving forward right. um, and not just keep relying yeah, on the end of your I'm, I'm open to that, you know, like I said, it, it, I, I just think that, you know, like it, 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 we really do need to spend a million, you know, to catch up, but we're not going to get there, obviously. Right. So, um, so. Um, well, so give us a number. What does everyone else think? <laughs> well, no, I, I'll yeah. open it up. To that. My yeah. thing is, I think we need to yeah. we need to budget for more, even if it's in smaller increments. So say this year we budget six twenty five. Oh. Okay, because we did six hundred last year, six twenty five this year. The remaining balance out of the out of the six, out of the seven fifty comes out of the undesignated fund. Right. But we now have to these, start all somewhere. Of these, um, all of these capital improvements that we're talking about tonight are already coming out of the um, undesignated fund. Right, but I'm talking about, we budget 600,000 every year for roads, right? Is that what we, is in the budget? We, yeah, and this, okay. this, this, this year is proposed to be offset completely by undesignated fund balance. The whole amount. The whole amount. So you're not using tax revenue for any of the roads? For this year, yep. Correct. Wow. Um, We're using 1.3 million. We use out of under, We have 4.5. We need to to maintain the 12.5 percent of the budget. We're estimating, based on our estimates, it's about 2.4. So, and the 1.3 is included in that. So, we still have two two million left over. Or a two million, not left over. In the surplus. In surplus. Yeah. Yes. So after, after these capital improvements are paid for from the end designated balance fund, after that, we still have four point five. No. We no. Have, no. 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 We we have the three point two. Anyway, three point two. Okay. That, I was just getting confused yeah. by what, yeah. the way you were saying that. Okay, so at, so we have four point five right now. After yeah. that, we'll have three point. We're gonna put. We're, uh, I was talking about how much we were going to um, need to cover the twelve point five percent, and that's so, about two and a half. Right. So we're gonna use one point three. So it'll it'll bring the undesignated fund balance down to three point two. We need 2.4. Okay. okay, so every year do we not, do we use undesignated funds every year to cover roads? We don't. We no. did in tax. Oh, we did. 
but until COVID. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you, Lisa, I got broken up. We did until COVID, <laughs> and it was, it's this year that we, um, we didn't use any. No. Okay, Why so. Why did we use um, it? Oh, because we had the school break, so we could use it out of the tax revenue last year. Right. What I'm saying is, every year, like in the previous five years, we've always taken the total amount out of undesignated funds to pay for roads. We've never budgeted for roads. Not when I, well, maybe we, we might have, but I've only been here a couple of years, so yeah. I really don't know that for a fact. Yeah, we is we had we we what we would do in the past is we would you know figure out what we want is we would fund some of it as you propose some through the budget process and then some through the undesignated funds. Right, but we haven't done that in several years. Right. No, just one year that I've been here. Right. This fiscal year that we're in right now. So we don't normally budget for roads maintenance, road paving. We, well, we, we have rely, we, we're relying 100% on the undesignated fund every year. No, not every year. In the every past, year, but one year. Well, the one year that she's been here, we have, is that we've taken it all from the undesignated fund. Before that, I, I think the year before we might have just used the undesignated funds, but before that we would take some take what we figured it was that I think the first year that we increased to 500,000 we took I can't remember it was like no 300,000 that we budgeted and then 200,000 okay I think that's right, all vice yeah. versa. right that's what I'm saying is right. so it's a it's a 50 it's split because like you said right. with inflation and everything right. else come next year you don't know what you're gonna have and then right. you have no you're gonna be relying on the undesignated fund you could end up with you know, Correct. And, if no we money get, for and then the other thing is, if we get to a point where all of a sudden we have to borrow money, we're going to be paying exactly. for this for years. Exactly, and that's what and I'm I, I think of. that's where we need to start getting ahead of it as a town, because otherwise we're going to hurt ourselves right. a lot in the long run. Right. We should be budgeting yeah. for roads. Yeah. It, it, no, it's been you no know, in the past. It's been proposed that we bond the roads, but I'm totally against no. that. No. They're, <laughs> no. they're you know. they, they, right. They, exactly. So, and, um, but. Um, so if we do seven hundred and fifty thousand, you know, is do you wanna do you want to put some into our budget process? We would that So I mean I guess finish. when we go back and look at the budget that would that would is, you know, make the tax rate jump quite a bit. So the number you already have for our proposed tax rate after this year, is that with that six hundred thousand in there or is that with that six hundred thousand going to the being paid for at the undesignated fund. So, I mean, roughly, and they, like Lisa said, there's are estimates and there's variables. And no, absolutely. Know. Yeah, so using, fully offsetting the roads um, and also to a lesser, just lesser extent, recreation's a whole separate separate thing, but they... Yeah, she's revenues. kind of offsetting her own increase with. So 4.33% 4, 4 increase. So, four, you know, a 4.3% increase to our Ta taxes. I mean, and then, and that's without budgeting. That's budgeting zero dollars right, for take, roads and taking it a hundred percent out of undesignated. Yep. Now, the, the, these these this is where we every year we get to this point and we try to decide, you know, how much of that undesignated fund we want to use and how much we want to keep back is um, last year we, we kept more in it because we weren't sure what was going to happen is uh, you know and we were very surprised that revenues were coming in much higher than you know we expected and then when the building permits and everything started you know we really got a big boost All right correct but that's but, I mean that yeah. that's probably good for a couple of years so yeah. it's a nice bubble but that's not it's not sustainable. It's not sustainable. Right. I mean, what happens in five years and we need to, to continue to maintain the roads. Yep. I mean, we have to do it every year. That would be a huge significant jump at that point if you tried to put the entire one million back into the budget. Right. Do 
it's a good, I mean, it's a great point. I mean, that's something that I know, I don't know if Steve's either watching this or watching the replay, and I know for a fact he's against that for the same re same line of thinking is it's it's artificially keeping the tax rate low. Right. The concern, my concern coming in was knowing that we're going from 1830, we no longer have that school subsidy, so that puts it back at, you know, 19 as a start already. That subsidy being gone, tax rate's already going up. So now it's how much do we, you know, how maybe it's not the full thing that needs to be offset. We take a look at. I think we need to take a look at, at starting at some point putting this into the budget. It needs to be a budgeted item. It's a, it's a mm -hmm. concrete thing we have to do every year. Um, because if the rug gets pulled out of us in a couple of years, it's not sustainable to, to just keep dipping into the the yeah. undesignated fund. Yeah. And see that I agree. Uh, we I, need to, I agree. We need it. The, the roads need to work. Right. So. I, I agree. Uh, I mean, obviously, that it needs to be a sustainable system that we, we in, in, engage in. But the fact that we have the surplus means we've already taken the money from the people and, you know, holding on to, you know, your 20, 25% of, you know, a, a whole budget just seems a little wasteful. I mean, we could definitely offset in a little bit, you know, maybe budget 25% of the capital improvements, take the rest from undesignated balance. That way it's not such a big hit. And right. You, can, you know, <laughs> alternate that as years go on, if they're good or if they're bad, you know. But that's exactly, no, that's what I mean is at least just start the process of putting into the budget. It doesn't have to be the whole thing this year. It's just we need to start making a path that's more sustainable. I think, yeah, I, I fully understand. I mean, yeah. even if, uh, even if you if you look at a ten year projection, uh, or you know less than that, seven year projection, you say okay, ten or fifteen percent of whatever you're going to do needs to be budgeted, and moving forward. But at some point, it, it we have to be able to sustain the, the town roads within the budget, oh. or at least a portion of it. Uh, again, if we have a really good year and we have a lot of, and because I, I agree with you, Noah, that. This is tax dollars. The undesignated fund is filled with tax dollars. So we should be using that. It's mm -hmm. just we can't sustain it. Yeah, we had a great couple of years, but what happens if there's a dip and we don't? Does everything go, you know, crumble? So I just think we need to build in there some way of getting on track for for the future. Um, so you suggesting we start that this year is so yeah, I, give us some numbers. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, is, uh, we, you know, we need to start some, if we need to start some places, we need to start with some numbers someplace. So. What's the total, what's the total that you want to take out of the undesignated fund? 1.3 million. And that's for everything capital improvement. Yep. That's not just the roads. Yeah, that's. So if you're just talking the roads, you're talking 750,000. So if you start there and you say take 10% of that and budget 10% of that, and next year we increase it to 20% and 80% undesignated, then 30%. I mean, unless somebody has a different number, I'm just saying building blocks. I don't want it to be huge. I don't because you're right. People are going to come and see the, the tax rate and go, "Whoa, what the heck happened?" Um, but we need to. We just need to start that path. I think that's very reasonable, and I can. Crunch yeah. some numbers and Crunch, yeah. throw some get, get back to us with something. And uh... I'm with you. I think just like with the safer grant, everything we want to do, we want it to be sustainable. Right. Cool. Right. Well, thank you. All right. I got actually got one more thing to wrap up on. Is uh, we found a Warren article that I believe, from what I've seen, it gives us the ability to use the ARPA funds. That can, it, which uh, that's up to that's a little bit more than eight hundred thousand dollars, and that could be used. So, at, so, but the op, no, not everybody understands the yeah. acronym. American, American Recovery, Recovery, Corona, the Recovery Fund, Recovery Fund. Thank okay. you. Yeah, they were funds that are allocated to county government, local government, 
uh, stimulus funding um, and um, the proposal is to spend up to 75,000 on premium pay um, prorated for uh, part-time seasonal folks but everybody gets that premium pay stipend like we've talked about and then the rest for either um, most likely water water improvements that we need to upgrade a water plant but if uh, other funding comes in for a water plant we might want to pivot and use that funding for our stormwater project um is there a time limit on when we have to use funds or is that just sitting in our bank account no it has to be it has to be uh allocated or designated by a certain time i thought it was three years yeah so. it sounds about right yeah yeah you so. have to at least and, and for you have five years to spend it but you have three years to say this is what i, th we're I think so in. and for those that yeah. don't know i believe it's got to be either lost revenue for like james said it's like specifically water or health care yeah. um something anything that comes back to town but i think yeah, using it for, for water, I think, would definitely help with yeah, what the town's going needs. through. I mean, even though I'm on a well in it, it doesn't matter to me, but I think for the rest of the town, it will be something that could be a huge asset. Yeah. That's it, yeah. Right. Yeah, okay. Um, any other questions, comments about budget items? We're going to talk about the firefighter. That is included in the uh, updated sheet. So with the with the Increases I talked about is um, with the f fully funding the f the fire and uh, seven hundred and fifty thousand for roads. Um, if we did it all from undesignated, is do we have a hard number for a tax rate? Do we so with everything with everything mm -hmm. that we have here? I don't think there's a hard number. Um, Lisa, you can. Correct me if I'm way off, but I think if you if you took the tax rate and you added four point three percent to the tax rate, you'd be the nine you'd be the nineteen tens. But that's you know, with a you know, things are subject to change. If if revenues come in less or if um, things like that, but if you if you make some variables concrete, I mean that's in the in that range so with the with the new firefighter you're talking about a full-time firefighter position i know you gave us the number that would be taken out of undesignated funds for this year and then it, it enveloped by the fire department budget the, next so year. so undesignated funds can only be used for capital improvements That's what I thought. Right. right yeah no that would go into the budget oh i thought you just said yeah. okay i misunderstood yeah. sorry all right yeah, yeah. so yeah. That, that, would, that was my understanding i'm like oh you putting this yeah 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 no, no tom requested it be put in instead of paying part of it just doing it right. again getting ahead right. having the money there so so a little over 19 dollars for the tax rate um do you remember what the tax rate was proposed to be before the school gave us our uh, rebate last year so it was 1936 yeah i think it was proposed i mean i think it was gonna be a little bit higher than that yeah so, so if we go with everything we've talked about right now, is it would still be a lower tax rate than what we had proposed last year, and we're getting more services and more you no know, personnel and things out of it. So, you know, I think that's pretty good improvement. So, it's lower than two years ago. Uh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, the budgets are always, you know, difficult. My my first year back, when I came back on, is um, I think we only funded roads at one hundred and fifty thousand that year, and uh, it, it was a disaster. Is, uh, so, you know, as I said, that you know, one of the things I've been trying to do is to build it up over these years to you know to get ahead. I'm, I'm I'm really pleased with what we have been getting done. So, is that that. Uh, a lot of bad roads taken care of.
my commute home was much more enjoyable. <laughs> <laughs> um, any other comments, questions? No. Uh... So the the oh the fire uh, police department. You, um, I sent you an email just asking for more data um, because I, I appreciate the police chief sending us that uh, comparison, but I think that it's hard to compare without all the extra information, like um, because they are pretty close to a lot of the departments there. But the difference could be if that if that police chief's been there ten more years than ours, and that makes it longevity makes a huge difference. And so we need to look at that. We need to look at size and population and number of responsibility. So, I mean, if one department has 12 officers and another has 30, that's a huge difference in responsibility. So I think all that information, before we uh, respond to his request, we just need to have more data to look at. Yeah, yeah and as, as I said in my email, I, I think we need to sit down the whole, this whole secession planning is we need to sit down and, and hammer this out and uh, figure out where they're going as a town with this because, you know, it, it's, I, I did talk to Chief Town personally after you know, our discussion here, you know, about the keeping him on as chief and things. And I haven't changed my position. I, I still think that, you know, is we need to, you know, look at transition in a way. And I told him that. And he understands my position also, but you no, know, I'm not saying we need to get rid of any of them immediately, but we need to make that plan. So, yeah. we also need to be careful. I mean, because um, I'm like I said, I just need more data, but I'm not opposed to his request because uh, right now in law enforcement, public sector period, public <laughs> safety, um, it's really, really hard. Um, uh, to one, get new recruits that are interested in going into that field, and two, on the other side, there's been a lot of retirements, especially during COVID, so finding good leaders is difficult. Yeah. Um, but I do agree a succession plan to, to maybe give some opportunities some, to some officers who are existing there for helpful retention, but we want to be careful, too, that we don't... Uh, we don't cut off our leadership before we're prepared. Yeah, well, as I said, I, I talked to Tim, and yeah. you know, and uh, is I'm, I'm more than willing to sit down with him again and talk. You know, but so, but that's off the budget a little bit. But yeah, is, um, so. Anything else? Well, wouldn't that wouldn't that fall into the budget? <laughs> <laughs> kind of falls into the budget. Well, we're talk it, about, I, I, mean, I mean, the whole secession thing. You right, know, right, but so I mean, gotcha, his gotcha. request for. The raises that would fall in this year's yep. budget. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're requesting five percent, so yeah, which would be included in the budget. So we would need more information before deciding. Right. Okay. So. I think the last piece is just I did send the uh, uh, the uh, job description of the yeah. planning and code technician. So. Yeah, I, I got think Linda had it. And that other piece, I did a salary, quick salary survey. Yeah, it looks like it's right on. I think it'd be really. I don't, I don't think we have a lot of time. I think um, Patty, Patty's out um, timeline for like voting on the warrant articles and all of that is pretty. Um, right, right, we're tight schedule. Yeah. yeah. So is um, we might have but, to schedule yeah. If 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 need if need be, we can call on a special meeting ahead of yeah. time, and it doesn't have to be on a Tuesday. So is uh, you know, if we need to discuss something, yeah. You no, know, but yeah, we'll we'll keep to our schedule as far as you know the budget and everything. We have to have our public hearings, and I have to read mm -hmm. read through everything five times, and <laughs> <laughs> so is um. um Anything else? That's all, that's all I got. I think that covers the loose ends I had. All right. Noah. Everybody, Noah. Everybody's fine? All right. Well, we've already adjourned, so have a good night, everybody. Thank you.